Spirit of the living God, we petition you now. Fall fresh in this place. Someone's real close to a breakthrough. And they're trying to hold back. Fall fresh so that they cannot combat the power that you release in this house. We want to leave here more in love with you, more knowledgeable of your word, and with a greater desire to worship you. Fall fresh in here, God. Right now, have your way with us. We will be in a hurry to give you praise, for thou art worthy of the praise. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together one time for God. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Y'all had one more time to say, I love you, Jesus. And I was taken off in an all-out sprint. Walter, if you ever see me run down that aisle, just push the doors open. I'll be back in a few minutes. But they had one more time to say that. Have you ever just loved somebody so much? Oh, God, I wish I could just get my hands on him sometimes. I love him so much. I wish I could touch him. I might not be able to touch him spiritually or physically, but he can touch me spiritually. That's why I love him so much. In spite of what he knows about us, he still loves us. What a mighty God we serve. Bless the house. Bless this word. Bless this house in the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Acts chapter 27. We're going to jump to the back today. We'll come back, but... Spirit led me here this morning. We're still in Acts, but we're going to do a little jumping. I wish, and I, I, I challenge you, and I wish that you would read the whole book of Acts. Uh, when you start reading and studying certain books, God will allow some of the things you're studying to happen in your life. Uh, I, I admonish you to come to prayer meeting when we have prayer meeting on the last Wednesdays of each month. From now on, what we did Wednesday, we're going to do every last Wednesday in the month. We're just going to lay hands on folk. We're going to lay on the floor. We're going to do whatever we need to do to get a breakthrough. God released some people from some prison cells they have been in for a long time on Wednesday. So I'm grateful to be a part of what God is about to do. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 27 verses 19 through 25. When you have it, would you say amen, please? Amen. Verse 19 says in the New International Version, On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. Yeah. When neither the sun nor the stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. After the men had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. Verse 25, so keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Amen. The grass will wither, the flowers will fade, but the word of God will stand forever. This morning's topic is, how can you thank God at a time like this? Amen. How can you thank God? Yeah. At a time like this. Would you repeat that with me? How can you thank God? At a time like this. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, sanctuary servants, deacons, choir, all those who have served up to this point. We thank God for your service unto his house. It's true. We all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different areas of life. We all come from different walks of life. We all have different cultures. Um, we all have different lifestyles before we came to Christ. But the one thing we all have in common is that 
each of us has had our share of storms. Not just in life, but in this year alone, 2013, we've all had our share of storms. We've all had our shares of ups and downs. We've all had our nights of crying, dismay, despair, and even depression. And one of the greatest feelings a believer can have is the feeling you're in a storm for a season and finally the day comes when you press your way through that storm and for a season that storm is now over. Think about it. I know you've all been through something in your life that had you going through and you felt like giving up and throwing in the towel. But that day when you got out of that storm, that was perhaps one of the greatest feelings you've ever had. It's exhilarating. I mean, it's it's it, it's a storm you've been through your season of suffering. You cried yourself to sleep. You went through the period of pity. You prayed and you cried. You prayed and you cried. And when you got through praying and crying, you prayed and you cried some more. You prayed and you cried. You 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 fasted and you finally got delivered out of that thing and I believe you were somewhere saying glory to the name of the Lord yeah yeah I believe I believe we've all had our share of storms I think we can all agree that there are five types of storms we all have been through or we can at least relate to I think there are five I think there is a storm of disease I think there is the storm of divorce I think there is the storm of disaster there is the storm of depression and yes there is the storm of death there's no worse feeling than having to watch someone you love die and there's nothing you can do about it that's a terrible storm. And, and if you loosen up your halo uh, this morning and untighten your wings for a minute and, and be honest, one of the hardest things to do is to put on a smile or to praise in the midst of a storm. Come on, unloosen your, unloosen your, unloosen, unloosen your preacher collar. Just unloosen your halo, unloosen your wing. Take your gold slippers off for a minute and be honest with yourself. It's hard to praise God when you're going through a storm. Thank you for your honesty and, and, and even though we are required by God to rejoice and again I say rejoice we're required by the word of God to smile and put on the garment of praise thanking God in the midst of a storm can be difficult if almost impossible. And, and no matter how you shout, no matter how much you sing or pray or praise, if you're in this room tonight, uh, this year for some of us has been a good year, but for some of us, this year hadn't been that great. Talk back to me if you can. For, for some of us, it was good and it has been good, but there are some in here who can say, I've seen better days. Yeah, it, it wasn't all that great. It was a constant season of giving and giving and giving. Have you ever given and given and given and it seems like you're getting nothing in return? Yeah, for some of us, we can say we've been giving and giving and we've got nothing in return. For some of us, it was not that great of a year. I mean, for some of us, our lives got disturbed with divorce. Some of us got laid off. Some of us got into a long time friend disagreement. Some some of us got rebuked by a leader. Some of us got hurt by a leader. Some of us got hurt by a friend. Some of us said you can count on me and you turned your back on them. Some were attacked on an all-time high by the enemy. Some of us said I thought I'd never get out of this storm I'm in. It might have been a good year for you, but for some of us, it wasn't that great. Oh, Lord, help us today. And I, I, I thought, you saying to yourself, I thought I'd never get out of this storm. I mean, my job was challenging me. My faith got stressed. I felt abandoned like Job. Folk set me up. Folk set me down. Folk shut me down. Folk lied on me some flat out, cursed me to my face. It was a trying time for some of us. 
I'm trying to help you this morning. And when I hear people say that this is a time to remember, these are the good old days, well, some of us almost gave up. Just going to let you think about that for a moment. Some, some of them, I'm talking to me, some of us almost, yeah, yeah, some of us almost gave up. But, 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 but if you made it to this church today, if, if you pressed your way through, and if you're sitting in here right now, if you can, if you can wave your hand, just wave your hand, just offer a hand off. And if, 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 if you got a praise in your spirit, some people are looking at you and some people know your story and they're asking the question, how can you thank God? At a time like this. Whew, that's the question, brothers and sisters. The world wants to know today. They wonder how can we continue to thank God when this world is in an uproar? How can we continue to thank God when the economy is topsy-turvy? How can we continue to thank God when it seems like everything we eat is going to kill us? Come on, they talking about salad going to kill us after a while. I'm a dead duck if that's the case because everything in this world seems to be killing us. But how in the world can we thank God at a time like this? How can you give God praise at a time like this? This is the world's message to us as believers. And this is what the people on the ship are asking Paul. Paul, the apostle, Paul is on this ship in chapter 27, and he's on his way to Rome. That will be his final resting place. He knows when he gets to Rome, after he tells his story, he knows what his fate is. Paul's going to die in Rome. Yeah, how would you like to know that when you get to a certain destination, this is your last ride and you're going to die when you get there? Paul knew that when he got to Rome, Rome would be his final resting place. And before some stuff, yeah, but have you really gone to Calvary for the name of Jesus? Have you really gone through a storm? I mean, a storm like Paul has gone through. Until you have gone through like Paul has gone through, you can't thank God at a time like this. What did he go through? Pastor, I'm glad you asked. He went through starvation. He went through thirst. He went without clothes. He was buffeted by Satan. He had no place to sleep. He was reviled. He was defamed. He was treated like the filth of the earth. He experienced trouble on every side. He was distressed. He was perplexed. He was persecuted but not forsaken. He was cast down but not utterly cast down. He, he was always bearing about the dying of of Jesus Christ. He was troubled on every side. He was tried. He was falsely accused. He had been bruised. He had been battered. He had been beaten. Five times he received 40 stripes minus one. Thrice he was beaten with rods. Once he was stoned. Three times he suffered shipwreck. One night he spent all night and day on the deep sea. He had to make journeys by himself. There were perils of waters. There were perils with robbers. There were perils with heathen. There were perils in the city. There were perils in the wilderness. There were perils with his false brethren. He was weary in his body. He lost his eyesight. He lost his friends. He never talked about having a family. He was offended. He got used. He got misused. And he still had faith enough to say when I'm weak, hey, then I am strong because my strength is made perfect in my weakness. Oh, you thought you had a bad day. You thought you had a bad week. You thought you had a bad life. Live like Paul lived and you can praise like Paul prays because he can say I can thank God at a time like this. My strength is made perfect in my weakness. And if anybody had the right to thank God, it was Paul at a time like this. I feel all right now. I've gotten encouraged because if Paul can do it, I believe I can make it now. And my question 
to you is, how will you learn to survive if you've never been stuck? <laughs> He's given us all things. He's given us all wisdom and knowledge. So if you get stuck, that's not the time to quit. That's the time to gird up your loins and to learn how to survive with Jesus Christ. Yeah, Paul says, I can thank God like this because I was tried like this before but but not only was he tried like this before paul says i can thank god at a time like this because i've tasted victory i've tasted victory oh god it's in the text verse 35 verse 35 go with me to verse 35 he says after he said this he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them. Then he broke it and began to eat. This is synonymous with Paul taking Holy Communion. Thank God we're taking communion today. But, but when all of the cargo had been tossed overboard, when all of their hopes were gone, when all of their dreams had been dashed, Paul stands up in their midst with a message, and the message was this, let's eat. We must be talking to a crazy man. He, the storms are raging, and he wants to sit down and eat. See, here in the midst of the storm, communion is served. And perhaps the church today, in her desire for order and predictability, has missed the true meaning of communion. I think it's something we just do because we do it on the first Sunday. Oh, Lord have mercy. But when Jesus offered communion, think with me now, when he offered the bread and the cup to his disciples, he served communion while Calvary was on the horizon. He served communion in the midst of his disaster. He served communion right before he was getting ready to die. And when we take communion, it shouldn't be done just because it's something we do. It's what we do to tell the storm, you ain't got the final say. Jesus does. And you're taking it in the midst of what you're going through. Everybody that takes communion today, don't you lie to God and you can't lie to yourself. Everybody in here is going through something right now. Come on, let's just take a minute and think about what you're going through. And if you change your perspective when you're taking communion, perhaps when you get done taking it, God will bring you out because you're telling the storm, you don't run my life, God runs my life, and I'm going to sit down and act like what I've been waiting on has already, I wish I had some help in here, so I'm going to eat my bread, I'm going to drink my wine because I think everything is going to be all right. I think I like that. Everything is fine. See, we missed the meaning. And, and Jesus did it in the face of his adversaries. And, and we can do the same thing. I mean, can you imagine the scene? There, there are 300 men on this ship. And the ship is about to go down. It's, bit, it's going down. And they're bit down praying. Can you imagine? I love to see men pray. But this is 300. It's more men on the ship that's in this room. And they're all bending over praying. What this is, this is what I like to call a commemorative in the midst of a crisis. How many of you all do that? I mean, come on, be honest. When you hear bad news, what is the first thing you do? Oh, Lord, we pray. Yeah, we do. But here's what we do. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I can't believe they let me out. I can't believe they did that or said that to me when we should stop and re re recognize that God is up to something. You ought to hit your knees first uh, and curse later. Because if you hit your knees first, uh, God has a way of taking away what you wanted to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Later, but, but they were commemorating because they were celebrating what they knew was going to happen. They didn't really believe it, but Paul believed enough to where they bowed and they prayed with him. Because he no longer is concerned about his outcome because he's come through worse than this. And he's tasted 
victory. Oh, Lord. In, in competition, I like watching sports. I like watching track. And in competition, uh, that involves any kind of running. Uh, when, you, when you win the race, you get to take a victory lap. Yeah. 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 Uh, the people that came in second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, they have to stop and watch you run, Lord have mercy. You get to take your country's flag, wrap it around you, and run while everybody else, y'all are hearing me, they watch. And every now and then, when you're going through what you're going through, you ought to take the blood-stained banner of Jesus, wrap it around yourself, and just stop. because you got the victory. I wish I had some help in this room today. See, we spend too much time crying when we should be running a victory lab because victory was given at Calvary. Oh, God bless you. He had a prayer meeting. He, he, he had a prayer meeting after he had the victory lab. While he's running, all the other people are watching. And, and the reason Paul can thank God at a time like this is because Paul is saying, I ran this leg before. And every time I run this leg, I get victory after victory. So he broke bread and he prayed first. Yeah. Woo. First thing we want to do is lay aside our prayer life and spend more time with the problem. Anytime you lay aside your prayer life, you're giving your problem too much of your time. The problem should never get bigger than your prayers. And for some of these men, this was the first time they had ever prayed. The first time. A prayer meeting in the midst of a storm. You can't pray at a time like this unless you've tasted victory with Jesus before. And in this life, victory is not given just because you ran, but you got to break the tape. They don't give you a medal just because you ran. They don't give out medals just because you are a Christian. No, you have to finish your course. And watch this. You have to run in your assigned lane. Because if you're in lane number one and you win, but you're in lane number seven, you could have the world record, but you're disqualified because you ran in somebody else's. I wish I had some help. You ran in somebody else's place. You got to break the tape and you got to break it in the lane God gave to me. That means some of us got to run with some haters. That means some of us got to run being lied on. That means some of us got to run being talked about. That means some of us got to run being laid off. Some of us got to run being sick. But if he says that's your lane, run, run till you can't run no more. I'm about to get happy in here this morning. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm about to get happy in this place. Paul had ran his leg before and he's about to break the tape. And you got to finish. You got to finish, brother. Paul knew the God he served was about to do it again. He probably called on the God of the wind. He probably called on the God of the waters. He probably called the maker and creator of heaven and earth. He probably called on the captain of the howling winds and rain. But whoever he called on, Paul got an answer before the storm was even over. And for you to appreciate the attitude one must have while eating, you got your food in front of you, your stomach is growling, your mouth starts watering you. You have to be thinking about eating before you can enjoy actually eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God have mercy. What kind of person can eat when death is knocking at your door? Somebody who knows a man who has overcome death can do that. Yeah, Paul could. He, controlled by the weather he he would rather worship in the midst of the storm the God who controls the weather and and so Paul found a table while he was being tossed to and fro and he sat down and ate and he says you're going to need some strength for what's about to happen see if you're going to get victory brothers and sisters you're going to have to learn God's not going to just give it to you you're going to have to participate. 
you're going to have to give him some help. God is just not going to hand you your blessing. He says, eat first because you're going to need some strength to get to the other side. God Almighty. He said, I've, I've, I've been tried like this before. He says, I've tasted victory. And watch this. The reason he can thank God at a time like this, I'm gone. He says in verse 23, I talked to God last night. God Almighty. He says, I talked to God. Look at the verse 23. Last night, an angel of the God who I am, whose I am, he spoke and he said, he stood beside me and said, do not be afraid. Paul, you must stand trial before Caesar. Meaning, Paul, you're going to make it to Rome. Caesar is the governor. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail. That's a good place to share. We're in a storm. It looks like we're going to die. But the angel of God said, you're going to make it. And not a person on this ship is going to die. Okay, so if the ship is going to wreck and everybody's going to make it, perhaps it means we're going to have to do some swimming. We're going to have to grab on to some stuff. We're going to have to hold on to some stuff. But we're going, oh, that's a good place to close right there. But we're going to make it. See, in verse 10, Paul is talking about dying. But that was Paul looking out for Paul. And when Paul looked out for Paul, nobody would listen. But after a night of fasting, after a night of praying, his message changed. He said, if, if, if you have a word, folk that don't want to listen will have to listen after you've talked to God. God Almighty. See, if people aren't listening to you, it's probably because you're concerned about you. But when you have a word from God, people who don't even want to listen have to listen because they know you are an agent and a voice of God. And even if they don't like you, they got to listen to the word. They didn't like Paul. But because he talked to the angel, they had to listen. And this time his message changed. Why did it change? Because he talked to God the night before. His prayer life was changed because he stopped listening to the winds, stopped listening to the storm, and he started listening to the whisper of the Lord. He, he says, I talked to God last night. And in verse 25, he says, I believe God that it will be just as it was told. Let's start. Look at your text. He said it will be just as the angel said. And I don't know about you, but nobody wants to be shipwrecked. But every now and then, shipwrecks happen in life. Matter of fact, you could say this was what the meteorologist would call a perfect storm. Do you know what a perfect storm is? Uh, that means it's a storm that's not even in the forecast. Uh, and when this storm comes, uh, the winds blow from the north. Uh, the winds blow from the south. Uh, the winds uh, blow from the east. Uh, and they blow from the west. Uh, and what the perfect storm does uh, is it forces you to the center of the earth to die can I get a witness uh, the perfect storm uh, won't give you a way out uh, but it pushes you right to the center where it is most dangerous uh, he said excuse me sirs uh, but be of good cheer uh, the ship's going down uh, but we're going to make it uh, y'all don't know when to shout in here uh, he said the ship's going down uh, but we gonna make it uh, to the other side. Uh, Paul 
Saul's focus is not on what he lacked, uh, but now his focus uh, is on what he learned from the Lord. Uh, it was Paul who said, uh, I've learned uh, to be content uh, in whatever state I'm in. Uh, it was Paul who said uh, that if for me uh, I can do all things uh, through Christ who strengthens me. Uh, Paul said that, uh, that if God be for us, uh, who can be against us? Uh, is there anybody here who can talk like Paul? Uh, it was Paul who said, uh, after you've done all you can uh, to stand, uh, he says, stand uh, and watch the storms go by. Uh, not only did he say that, uh, but he believed that. Uh, and look at what happened uh, at the end of the story. Uh, the waves are crashing uh, and Paul is praying. Uh, the crew is screaming uh, and Paul is fasting. Uh, the tension is mounting uh, and Paul is eating. Uh, we'll be pushed by the winds, uh, but we're going to make it. Uh, the water's going to rise, uh, but we're going to make it. Uh, matter of fact, we might have to jump, uh, but we're going to make it. Uh, you might have some losses, uh, but you're going to make it. Uh, we might have to swim, uh, but we're going to make it. Uh, we might get stuck, uh, but the Lord uh, says we're going to make it. Uh, it might be dark, uh, but we're going to make it. The economy might crash, but you're going to make it. You might fall down, but get back up, because you're going to make it. We're coming out with our hands up. The ship might go down, but we've got God. And if we lose everything, and we still got God, everything is going to be alright. Is there anybody here believing in words? Is there anybody here that believe in God? Is there anybody here that will praise his name in the midst of the storm? For he that began a good work shall complete it. The storm was rising and the winds was blowing. They jumped out the ship and they grabbed what they could and somebody saw them coming from the other side side. They weren't on a ship, but they was holding to a plank. And if you can grab anything that's broken from the ship, high five somebody. Tell them I'm coming in. I'm coming in. I'm coming in on broken pieces. Is there anybody here got a broken piece? Is there anybody here got a broken heart? Is there anybody here got a broken relationship grab a hold grab a hold grab a hold and come on in ain't it all right ain't it all right ain't it all right ain't it all right won't he do it won't God do it let me hear you say yeah say yeah say yes Yes, I know he's all right.